I need that joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Good morning and welcome back to Limpets Do Church. We are whizzing through January and we are on to our third week of the timeline of Jesus. So this week we are going to look at someone who is also a very famous person and he's actually related to Jesus. And we do actually know a little bit about him. If you remember back last year at the beginning of Christmas, we were looking at the different elements of Christmas and we looked at hope. Do you remember when we looked at Lizzie and Zach when they were hopeful and they eventually got pregnant and had a baby? So today we're going to be looking at who that baby was. Do you know who he is? It's John the Baptist. Good morning. Good morning, Rufus. Good morning, Nano. So Rufus here was asking me about John the Baptist. So I'm going to tell you at the same time as I tell Rufus. So a long, long, long time ago in the Old Testament, there was a man who told everyone that before Jesus came, we were going to hear from a man who was going to be the person to introduce us to Jesus. Isn't that exciting? Do you know who that person was? Was it John the Baptist? <laughs> yes, Rufus has it in one. Well done, Rufus. John the Baptist was born in order to tell people about Jesus. It's simple as that. So it says in the Bible that he went out into the wilderness. So where Jesus was someone who spent a lot of time in the church with his parents, reading books, reading the Bible, learning all about God and the word of God. John was someone who spent a lot of time outside. So think about your closest park or somewhere that you like to go, like the, the, the beach or to the Cosmiston or Penny Van up in the Brecon Beacons, somewhere that's out and has amazing views. Where do you like to go, Rufus? Um, I like to go to Sully Beach. That's just around the corner. Don't like to go far, clearly. <laughs> okay, so John was very much a person who used to spend a lot of time outside. And in the Bible, we learn that he wore clothes made out of camel hair. Now Rufus, you're a dog. Do you have itchy hair? Uh, well, uh, kind of. I mean, it's not itchy to me, but it might be if you were to wear it. Now, I know that Rufus's hair is fairly soft, but he's a dog. Camels have much, much thicker, itchier fur. And John used to wear clothes made out of camel's fur and he wore a leather belt. That's what we know about his fashion sense. And it also says that he used to eat locusts and wild honey. Now locusts are the little bugs that used to fly around the place, they're a bit like grasshoppers, and wild honey came from the bees that used to be in the trees all around him. Do you like bees? Eh. Oh dear. <laughs> it's all right, there's no bees in here, don't worry. He was definitely someone who used to spend a lot of time outside and so therefore he used to get very dirty, he might have big bushy hair, he probably stepped in, in camel poo all the time. Maybe he used uh, some trees to do his teeth, do you think? No, you don't think he used the trees to do his teeth? How about he used to use, oh, I know, he used leaves to use as toilet paper. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he used the leaves as toilet paper. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, maybe he used rocks as pillows. Do you think? Because he slept outside a lot. Yes. So as you all know, it has been lockdown and during lockdown last year, nobody could get a haircut, which meant that everyone's hair was getting very, very long and all the men's beards seemed to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 
So this gave me an idea. Now I would like to introduce my husband, um, who uh, normally has a bit of a beard, has usually has fairly short hair. During lockdown, his hair got longer and his beard got bigger. And I kept joking about the fact that he looked like some old timey person, maybe Abraham Lincoln or maybe someone from the Bible. So this brings me on. This is my husband, Ben. He has now had a haircut and he has trimmed his beard, sadly. Um, I didn't tell him that I was, yeah. <laughs> it was big and bushy and very, very messy, I promise. Um, uh, so, and I thought that actually, when I was looking at planning my session for today, looking at John the Baptist, the first person that popped into my head was Ben. Because I thought that the way that he looked with his long hair and his bushy beard, actually, in my eyes, was a bit like what John the Baptist might have looked like. Sadly, sadly, he doesn't look the same now. But I still think that this is a really good idea. Now, so Ben here likes to eat some random food. He doesn't know what he's doing today, guys. Uh, he likes to eat some random food. Um, whenever we go to the supermarket, he will buy some very odd stuff. So I thought I would use that today and I would maybe introduce him to John the Baptist um, and, and maybe introduce him to some of the things that John the Baptist would do on an everyday basis. So how many of you have been to your local uh, shop, uh, maybe around the corner, one of the big supermarkets, and you have bought um, some curly whirlies or some marshmallows, some polos, skittles, an ice lolly. Now John the Baptist couldn't do this, they didn't have skittles back then. So when he went to his local round the corner shop, he bought, maybe, perhaps, some of these. <laughs> can you see what these are? As you can see, a nice tasty plate of bugs. Yes, guys, that's it. We have <laughs> mealworms, crickets, locusts, and buffalo worms. They don't look like buffaloes to me, but okay. So, this is where the funniest bit comes in. Ben, you are going to eat some of these. Am I? Yes. So, would you like... <laughs> it's just not prepared him for this, guys. Would you like to um, have a nice tasty snack? I should probably have brought you a glass of water, shouldn't I? But um, would you like me to go get you a glass of water? I don't know. <laughs> I'll go get a glass of water. So here we go, a nice big glass of water to wash down those lovely tasty bugs. What would you like to try first? Oh. <laughs> Start small, I guess. <laughs> Start small. So guys, he's going with the buffalo worms. No idea what buffalo worms are? <laughs> How does it taste? Not of much. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> would you like to take a handful of them? <laughs> He's going. <clears throat> <laughs> He's carrying on eating them. Go oh no! Oh no! Oh no! 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 Do I have to? This yeah. wasn't meant to be me eating them. Oh, I dropped it. It wriggled out of my hand. I hope it didn't wriggle. <laughs> oh, I, I broke it in two. Sorry, wormy. <laughs> I mean, it just tastes like air. Yeah. So, let's put them there. What would you like? You're going for the next size. Working my way up. Next size up. For you, young sir. <laughs> wriggly, wriggly. Does it taste the same? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to try another one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to try the next one? 
What's this? So this is the crickets. Yeah, it's got little legs. Yeah, and the you have to make sure that one's got wings and legs. Got to make sure it's got the whole body on. It's got eyes. Oh, yeah, it's got eyes, guys. <laughs> no. Why am I eating these? Because <laughs> you're John the Baptist, clearly. No, they're crunchy. And they're crunchy. Not really crunchy. Would you like to have another one? Do you think you should have another one? Yeah. Yeah, they all said yes. Make sure it's got his wings. <laughs> oh, it's a really weird sound. I need some salt. <laughs> <laughs> need some salt, right? I'll remember that next time, shall I? So then the last ones, guys, are the biggest ones. And these are the locusts. Remember where the locusts are in the Bible? We hear about locusts in Moses, I think. I've got a bit of wings stuck in my teeth. A bit of wings stuck. There's some, like, <laughs> would you like some water? Have some water. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> so, would you like to have a... Uh, this big one. Big old one, yep, yep. <laughs> Lush. He's putting it off, guys. <laughs> He's putting it off. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. How was that? Do you feel like a bird? <laughs> or a snake? I know what I would pick. No? Super healthy. It's got loads of protein. Hardly any carbs, yeah, loads of protein. protein. <laughs> <laughs> this is your one. I'm just having more water. <laughs> okay. Here goes, here goes, here goes. Can't do it. Look it in the eye. No, I eat it from the butt back. <laughs> Put the butt in my mouth first. Oh, I can't do it, guys. <laughs> oh! What the? Yeah. Oh, I just ate a bug. Oh, that wasn't too bad, actually. I'm going to put more of these. <laughs> he likes the worms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that is a very strange feeling. They do still have their wings and their eyes. His little bug, <laughs> bug faces. <laughs> so let's say a huge thank you to Ben. And then... <laughs> You have to get over the fact that it's a bug. They need oh. some seasoning. They do need some seasoning. <laughs> Anyone has any ideas on any good seasonings? Here we know. I say a huge thank you to Ben. Well done. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you get for growing your beard and uh, your hair really long. You end up having to eat bugs. So to all your fathers out there, tell them that if they've got really long beards, <laughs> get them some locusts. Some, get them some locusts. Right, well, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. I'll go to July. Yeah, bye. <laughs> in my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through you 
are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Whatever it was that he did when he was outside, he spent a lot of time talking to God and a lot of time preparing himself for Jesus. But he was so excited about Jesus and about God and about all the things that he was about that he went all round the villages, all round the towns, telling everyone that this man was going to come, that this was a man that was worth listening to. He was someone who was going to help them for the rest of their lives. And some people wondered if actually he was Jesus. But he said, I am not worth washing the man's feet. And at that time, I don't know if you remember, but at that time they wore flip-flops a lot. Have any of you worn flip-flops? I don't think you've worn flip-flops, Rufus, because you're a dog. dog. Dogs don't wear flip-flops. I wear flip-flops a lot and when I wear flip-flops my feet get really 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 dirty and actually John is saying that he wasn't even worth washing a man's dirty feet. He was so low on the level of where Jesus was that he was not even worth being someone to clean someone's feet. Now this always makes me laugh because I am someone who works on people's feet. That is my everyday job. So that definitely makes me feel important. If even John the Baptist didn't think he was worth playing with Jesus's feet. <laughs> yeah, I know it's disgusting, isn't it? I know, definitely. Well, John was someone who actually baptised people. Do you know what baptism means? Do you know what it means to be baptized? No. Shall I tell you? Yes. 
Okay, well, baptism is basically when you go into some water and you go underneath and you come back up again. It's very, very simple, very, very quick. And it is a way of showing other people that you love God. It's a way of just publicly saying, I love Jesus. Do you love God? Maybe we should baptise you. Mm. <laughs> I guess he wants to be baptised. So it did come to a point where Jesus came and he saw John the Baptist and he said, hello, John, nice to see you again. Now, obviously, John and Jesus were cousins, so they actually grew up together. So they did know each other. And Jesus comes along and John goes, yes, Jesus, will you baptise me? So John's the one who baptises everyone else. And he asked Jesus to baptise him. But actually, Jesus said, no, not going to do that. You're going to baptise me. Jesus said to John, you're going to baptise me. So John baptised Jesus. I mean, that is amazing. The fact that Jesus was baptised by someone rather than Jesus doing the baptising. Well, it's very confusing, isn't it? So basically, John the Baptist is called John the Baptist, not because his name was John the Baptist. That wasn't his surname. His name was John, but he baptised people and that was his job, basically. So that's why we call him John the Baptist. And he baptised Jesus. Shall we pray? We'll do our little prayer drill first. OK, so remember, I might not do it in the right order. So, number two, number one, and number three. Lord, I know that it can sometimes be really, really difficult to have the confidence to tell other people about your love. Lord, give us the strength and give us the confidence to be proud of you and to tell others all about you. Amen. A quick roundup of who John the Baptist is. A long time ago, someone said that John was going to be born and he was going to introduce everyone to Jesus. John is born, he grows up, he's friends with Jesus, but Jesus spends a lot of time in the church whereas John spends a lot of time in the wilderness. So John comes back from the wilderness to tell people all about Jesus. People think that perhaps because John is so knowledgeable and so intelligent and knows all about God, that perhaps he is Jesus. But he says, there is someone mightier than me. There is someone stronger than me, better than me to come along. I am not even fit to undo his shoelaces. Jesus comes along and he goes, Jesus, will you baptise me? And Jesus says, no, no, no. John, you will baptise me. Oh, and he ate a lot of locusts and wild honey. Well, that's it, guys. That is the end of today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed watching Ben and myself eat the crickets. Um, I'm not sure we'll finish the plate. <laughs> we might feed them to the birds. You think the birds will like them? I'm sure they will. So we shall see you this time, this place, next week to learn more about what happens to Jesus. Bye guys! <laughs>